All right, data types. Hopefully you managed to solve the uh, the printing of this variable the last episode. If not, then you just type console right line or CW tab, or it depends, might be tab twice, depending on if you have resharper or not. Either way, you want to type out weekdays, run the application, and there you go. Let's go ahead and go over data types. So data types, we can actually remove three of these, actually four of these using statements because to make it look less scary, not that it's going to matter. We wouldn't use them anyways. Now, as explained in the variables episode, a variable must have a specified data type such as int, double, char, bool, or string. Let's go ahead and declare all of them. So int my number equals five. Let's actually put a comment here saying integer double my double equals 5.5. Usually you would specify a D at the end of it. Because floats you with floats you would specify an F. But to keep it simple, let's just put it at 5.5. Floating point number. Char my letter equals and single quotes. Put a D there. Character, character, whatever. Bool. My bool equals true. This is what's called a Boolean. There we go. And of course we can't forget the string. String my text equals hello world. Here we go. Now a data type specifies the size and the type of a variable value. It's important to use the correct data type for the corresponding variable. Now this is in order to avoid errors, to save time and memory, but it will also make your code more maintainable and readable. Now these are the most common variables that you will encounter. Let's define their size as well. Now an integer allocates four bytes. This isn't something that you're gonna have to keep track of as of right now, but once you start diving deeper into, I don't know, let's say networking, might be a good idea to come back to this video and use this as a reference. Now this can store numbers from negative 2.1 billion to 2.1 billion. Now this stores fractional numbers and is sufficient for storing 15 decimal digits. This is eight bytes. A single character is two bytes. A bool is one bit because it's either true or false. So either a one or a zero, it would be kind of not smart to allocate four bytes for a single bit. And the string is two bytes per character, two bytes per character. Let's start working with numbers. Number types are divided into two groups, integer types, which stores whole numbers, positive or negative, without decimals. And there are two types, integer and long. Which type you should use depends on the numeric value. So an integer can store from negative 2.1 billion to 2.1 billion. So if you're gonna store a value that's relative to that size, then an integer would be great. However, if you want something that's twice the size of that, I would go with a long because otherwise you would get an exception saying that, you know, the value is too big for this variable. That's kind of why we have to specify the type as well and sometimes think of what we're storing in the, the variable. Now there's also floating point types, which represents number with a fractional part, you know, containing one or more decimals. Valid types for this would be float and double. Let's do floating numbers. That would be float and double. Now to keep this series simple and to the point, I don't want to try to overwhelm you with a bunch of data types, a bunch of different values. As for now, the ones that we're going to be using are these primarily. If we, however, decide to use another one, I will be explaining what it does and how to use it. If you don't understand this now, trust me, once we start writing more code, it's going to start clicking really easily. For now, you can go ahead and try to write out these variables. So my num, for instance, in order to see what it types out. And if not, I'll see you in the next episode where we will be going over user input. The more code, make sure to stick around. I'll see you then.